All right, so welcome back to the TRT and Homo Optimization YouTube channel. Welcome back, Dr. Rudy. How are you doing? I am great, and you? I'm fine, thank you. So let's start today by a question I got recently that I found uh, rather interesting. Is it a good idea to have your hormone levels checked when you are young to know what baseline you have in case one develops symptoms while getting older? Is that a good idea? So th that's a great question because, and then we're going to be talking about this a lot today. What we're noticing, this testosterone no longer just affects older men. Everybody who's practicing testosterone replacement, low T and men's health, is noticing that there's younger and younger men complaining of symptoms of true low T symptoms, testosterone deficiency. So when we do a blood test when the patients come and see us, um, what we've noticed in endocrinology, the absolute number may not tell you the, the whole thing. For example, normal testosterone level is from 300 to 1200. So if you have this young man coming in and his testosterone is 400, it's still within normal limits, but where is it compared to how it was before? So that's why it's not a bad idea for your, your listeners listening to, to get a baseline level when you're young, because when you're now in your 30s and 40s or 50s, and then you do a level, if you were 1,200 in your low 20s, now you went down to 400, you've decreased your numbers by, by two-thirds. Whereas mm -hmm. now this is not just the absolute number, it's the delta, the change of testosterone level. So it's not a bad idea. But to go further than this, where the more I practice testosterone replacement in endocrinology, is the more I realize that the numbers don't tell us the whole story. More and more research is showing us that the number is not what's important for the biological action. So you can have all of this testosterone floating around, but if you have abnormality with your androgen receptor, meaning the testosterone cannot bind to it, or if you have a lot of total testosterone, but your free testosterone is low because of an increase of SHBG or other things. So the number doesn't tell the whole story. But to answer specifically that question, it's not a bad idea for a young man to check his testosterone levels just to have it as a baseline. Because unfortunately, what we're seeing, there's a higher prevalence and incidence of low T in younger patients. And I'm going to cite an article by, actually, he's a good friend of mine, Dr. Ramasamy. He's from the University of Miami. And we interviewed him recently. He wrote a paper about two years ago where he looked at adolescents and young adult men, the age of 15 to 39. And he did a very big, it was a prospective study, but they were able to prove that in that population, about 20% of patients suffer from low T, from testosterone deficiency. That was a big aha moment for me, because at one point in my career, I said, I'm not going to treat any men less than 30 for low T. Because in my mind and in, in my, uh, you know, my T-shaming mind, we all have this, you know, we're like, no, uh, you don't need testosterone at 28. You, you should not. But the reality is because of our toxic world, because of everything that's going on, when you have a younger man coming to you, um, now we have this study to back us up to say that really even conventional medicine, conventional universities are realizing it is no longer just um, late onset hypogonadism. This is what traditional medicine is still recognizing, that you can develop low T at a later age. We're seeing more and more younger guys are developing that also. And then we'll go over that because I have a lot of pointers on what the causes are. But again, to answer the question, I feel like now as a, as a regular checkup, young men, when they go to the doctor, they should have their testosterone checked because that will be able to tell you 10, 20 or 30 years down the road, what was your best baseline and how much did it change to? It's a much important predictor than the yeah. total number. Yeah. So, and then um, if we can continue on that same one, the yeah. big problem for guys of that age, you know, the younger guys who come in and they tell you, Doc, I don't feel great. My energy level is lower. My motivation, um, you know, like my mood, depression, dysthymia. So there's a lot of this. Actually, Dr. Ramasamy did, did in his same study, he produced two papers like this. The first one that I liked, he said younger men, meaning less than 35, uh, usually their symptoms of low T are not sexual. It's really not that much that they have ED or erectile issues. The main symptoms of testosterone in the younger generation, it's number one, decreased in energy. Number yes. two, decreased motivation. 
and try yeah. to think about the number of young men that we see in their twenties, their thirties, who are saying, "Doc, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I have no motivation. All I'll, I'll try to do things, you know, but but I, I, I have dysthymia. Um, I, I came up with, with with this word, sexual anhedonia, SA, mm -hmm. uh, low libido. I hear so many young young guys telling me this. They're like, I don't have an erection problem, but sex for me has become almost a chore. I have to do it. I just do it. So a lot of things can be traced back to, to low testosterone. And going back to Dr. Ramasamy's paper, so his study showed that about 20% of adolescent and young adult ma males are suffering from low T. Their symptoms tend to be not sexual. Next, not sexual. And in his paper, uh, there was a strong association of obesity with low testosterone level, which makes sense. Um, but even when they corrected for obesity and increased BMI, the trend was still significant that low T did affect younger men, which is to me crazy. And this is now uh, the other passion that I have in my life now is understanding the relationship of our toxic world, the environmental toxin, the endocrine disrupting chemicals and their action on testosterone. Um, I don't know if you, you've seen like the book by Shana Swan, PhD Countdown, that uh, she published a paper in 2017, a meta-analysis that showed that sperm count has decreased 52% over the past 30 years. Male infertility that used to be pretty minimal, negligible 30, 40 years ago, now male infertility accounts for one, 25 to 33% of cases of infertility. So there is no question that we have a fertility issue in this country and Dr. Swan was able to point that environmental toxins, uh, including phthalates, BPA, pesticides like glyphosate and atrazine have a direct effect on sperm count. And you have to remember that sperm is made from FSH coming from the, uh, the pituitary that affects the Sertoli cells. But it is the same part of the pituitary that also secretes LH, luteinizing hormone, to affect testosterone. So the same effect that's affecting the FSH is likely also affecting the LH. So um, my question to Dr. Swan, when I had an interview with her, I'm like, okay, you told me that you have a higher percentage of young men in their twenties looking to conceive and who, who have to deal with male infertility. Majority of those guys, unfortunately, are gonna go and develop low testosterone symptoms at a younger age. What do we do as clinicians with those patients? Um, you know, when I have a 20-year-old, 25-year-old guy coming to me and telling me, Doc, I, I, I don't feel good, you know, and then they'll go online, they listen to your channel, listen to me, and they're like, I've done my research. I think it's my testosterone. A lot of times they'll go to their primary. The primary will not check it because they're like, I told you, you should not have it. Um, so this study is telling me, and I, I, I like to talk to my colleagues about this. We need to open our mind and open our differential diagnosis. We, even if it's a young man that you may not think has low T, check his levels and be understanding that he may need treatment. Now, the other side of the coin is, okay, now you got a 20-year-old guy with low T. What do you do with him? Because we do know that testosterone affects fertility. So, so the patient comes to you for fertility issue or low T. How can you treat him without having to affect his fertility uh, long term? And again, Dr. Ramasamy came up with another study. Dr. Ramasamy is just like, to me, a god. He's amazing. He did a study where he looked at guys who were on testosterone treatment for about 10 plus years, and they had a sperm count, a very low sperm count, you know, obviously. And he, he did a study where he took those guys, took them off testosterone, and put them on a specific fertility protocol, including high-dose HCG plus clomiphene. And in 95% of cases, within six months, those men were able to get their fertility back. That's another amazing study that before there used to be um, fear that testosterone therapy can cause irreversible fertility problems. This study kind of make, did that away with. That mm. yes, if you have a young man who needs testosterone, of course, your first course of action should not be, let me give you testosterone. Always the first course of action is let's help you lose weight. Let's help you clean your diet. Let's help you decrease your exposure to toxins and environmental um, um, uh, chemicals. Let's help you lift weights, get more muscle. Let's get you on the right supplements. But a lot of patients that reach out to me by the time they come to my clinic or by the time they call you, 
they're already exercising. They're already trying to change their diet. So it's not always that the patient, the young patient who has low T is a lazy slob. We yeah. tend to want to blame the victim. When I talk to my patients, my, especially my younger patients, I tend to have a lot of compassion and a lot of empathy. Not in a, I feel sorry for you, but in a, I get you. Nobody's yeah. listening to you, but I get you. I understand yeah. you're not feeling well. You're not the only one, but we have options. And usually at my clinic, the way I do it, fix nutrition, help them with exercise, get them to the right supplements. If that doesn't help, the second course of action is using secretor gogs like uh, clomiphene or HCG to try to increase um, the natural product production. But if we do all this and I still see that the young man is suffering, not having a good life, it is worth going on testosterone therapy. Of course, once you explain to the patient the fertility problems and that we don't have long-term studies of young men taking testosterone. But again, the studies from Ramasamy are showing us that the fertility issue can be mitigated and reversed, even if that patient needs testosterone.